Okay, here we are on a new project. This would be casting 193. A lot of y'all know this head is the original Vortec head. It actually had a meaning when they said Vortec back then, which I'm going to show you close-ups. It's got what's known as a screw port. Uh, it was using swirl technology to make a lot of bottom-end power, and a lot of people really down these heads. They are a great cylinder head. I mean, they're really good for the purpose in which they was intended, which is very low RPM torque, really good gas mileage, but like anything else, there's always a better way to do it. Now, what we're going to cover in this, we're going to CC the port from the beginning stock. We're going to record the volume, and then we're going to go in here, and I'm going to show you the mods. This is going to be a stage four deal, so it's going to get pretty intense. And um, this is for a gentleman in Texas that wants the best gas mileage he can get. He don't pull very often, every once in a while, maybe a boat from my understanding or something, but he wants a good, dependable truck. It's got some torque. Uh, well, I did match the cam. Uh, it's a head box profile. The cam was custom cut to match what I'm doing to the head so that it works with the computer and the check engine light doesn't come on. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and prep the head and get it ready for CC volume, let you see what it was when I started and what it ends up with head box stage 4 work done to it. And see, I went ahead, I greased the port, I've got a valve and a spring on it, I'm getting ready to use the barrette to go in there and get my volume. On the other side, the other side you can see I've got a little checker spring. I did put screw-in studs, the pull type, without a wrench head on it, I've just got that stuck in there, just to hold volume, because it does go through the port, okay? Okay. I've already put a hundred cc's in it. I'm at the 120 mark now. Be honest with you, I've never cc'd one of these heads stock before. I've done a stage two or three trick, probably 10 or 12 pairs of these things. And my customers absolutely love it. They said it made all the difference in the world. There's actually a story to it in Pulling Power. I'll be glad to share with you all my tech blogs. Okay, looks like we're coming to a close here. Here we go. Here we go. And pow. Wow, impressive. Looks like 182.6. That is 182.6. So right off the bat, this head is, uh, what, some 16 cc's or 15 cc's bigger than every Chevrolet port. It's 157. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready to do our work, and we're going to mark out what we're going to do. All right. Okay. I'm using the Felpro 1003 gasket, and what I'm going to do is I've got the dial pins locking it down. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to scribe this area. I go just on the intake side. That's all I'm concerned with. Now, this is a real weird deal because normally I would go in here and take all this meat out. But this is a swirl port and it's actually using it to turn the air somewhat. So I really don't want to go in there and take too much of that out. Alright, now there's our lines. Now it gives me something to work with. I'll probably start about right here and go up and clear it out there and there and sum up on the top and that's all I'll touch this right here. Let's get a little bit closer look at this. And as you can see, like I was saying, normally, wow, I'd go in here and swoop this. I still might modify it a little bit. I might like start in here. It'll come to me when I'm doing it because I know that this is shrouding some intake air. So. I'm going to move some of this over. Here I'll touch it. I know I'll tear this section out right here because I know that's killing the valve. So anyway, I just wanted to show you uh, where I'm going to be cutting and what the objective is. We'll get more inside the screw port design in a little bit. After a little consideration, this is what I've come up with. I'm going to start here 
and go inward. I'm not going to dig downward, but I'm going to come in and bring my swope to here. I'm using a cylinder with a rounded end. And I'm going to dig this out and pull into here to unshroud it so I can keep the curtain. It'll actually look something like this right here. It'll actually look something. It'll have its contour, but I'm going to pull this over to the line right about here because the curtain is just... I know they're trying to bank it, but I'm just not going to believe that that's helping this situation any. So, that's how I'm going to do it. And like I said, I'm doing it with that cylinder. So, let me go ahead and start. Let's take a look, and then I'll show you how I come up with it. I've got my swoop. <laughs> I'm sure my terms make you all chuckle, especially some of you big time fellows out there. Anyway, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm coming back. I let it dance off that valve a little bit sometimes. Make my first cut, then I start pulling it in with the cylinder. There's a big edge here, so I'm going to pull that out. go in sideways here for a miniature trick. Okay. Then I just kind of come in. And I'm following that, that, that curvature. And then try to come up and gnaw on it. Now you don't want to dig too much down in the chamber. You can really mess yourself up right there, so be careful. I'd say if I had to pick a point that's the most sensitive, it's this corner where the apex is, because there's fillet in here that you gotta grind out of it. And that's about as far as I go right here. This is the only raw material cut other than uh, reshaping this. I bring them edges down. That's for flame travel or a spark knock. I go in here and round that, take them edges, because remember, I don't want to take too much material out. I probably hit a couple of cc's easily right here, but when you look at the long-term effect of how much airflow I'm going to pass because of it, It absolutely is worth the CC loss. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and complete that. I'm going to show you how I round nose this end right here, and then the rest of it is simply prep for polish work. Then the chambers will be laid, and we'll get on to some more serious modifications on this turkey bird. All right, that's all for right now. To the next part of the chamber. And really, we're not doing a great deal. Like I said, I'm trying to watch the CC volume. But I'm going to alleviate this square and round it. I probably don't really have a lot to worry about it. The more I think about it, I don't believe detonation could occur except maybe on these sharp points right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down and round it and then the raw material removal is done and I'll begin the polish. But notice how I'm just going to clip the edge with the
One thing I would like to point out, an area I'm going to hit, I'm going to have to go to, I'm going to have to change burrs. I jumped up a little bit ahead. Uh, what I've got a problem with right here is notice the spark plug, boss. Okay? It's right there near the edge. I'm probably okay, but I'm going to go ahead and pull that back right there. That could be a hindrance in airflow in the chamber. And it's real close to where I'm going to lay the valve seat. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stop for a second, switch burrs. And it's going to cause me a, a little bit of extra time because i got to put the valves in each time. But it's worth it. I'm just going to go in here. on that just a little bit right there so that uh, when I make my swoop and I'm coming up I ain't got nothing much in the way of interfering. Now that's nice and rounded. I didn't take too many cc's out doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and clearance all them out and then get back but this right here is the last material mod. The rest of it will just be polishing and blending it and getting the chamber ready so I can do the valve job and get into the bolts. That's all for now. Just lied. I forgot this last little part. It's kind of insignificant. What the heck. Right here where my gasket line is, there's a chunk of metal right here. And be sure and get that because that's interfering with the flow path of the intake. And you do that with... That's just a small egg, a single cross cut, and you're just going to swoop to the gasket line. One thing, DIY guys, I always stay to the inside of the line. That gives it a little extra meat overhang in there, so stay on the inside. Notice how I took my egg and went back up in here and did my swoop. I, I did that so that it pulls in where I touched it with the cylinder. And man, when you take your finger, it feels just like it's poured in there. So anyway, that's all. I just wanted to show you that. Now I've got the best clear path around that valve. Here, here to the wall, and here to let the air exit. That, that's probably going to make almost as much difference as all the port work I'm doing to the bowls. And I just cannot emphasize it enough how important combustion chamber unshrouding is. It's flat amazing. Alright, anyway... Uh, next in line in a minute is I'm going to go ahead and do the blending and uh, polishing of the chamber. We'll touch on that some and then we'll get to the bowls. Hey, I just finished going in there and getting in the crevices. To show you some of the difference in it, let's go and get a shot between the two chambers. Notice how, you know, I took the small burr got in here, and then the big one around the chunk edges. Now I'm going to introduce you to a new fella on the block. Uh, haven't showed too much of it every once in a while. It just depends on what I need, but let me show you. This is a flame with a thin nose. And what it's good for is making little pulls and touching areas that you just want to lightly let dance. Yet it's got some cutting area. That's how I finished the rest of the chamber up because I didn't want to take a bunch of meat out, yet I have to take the cast out in order to get it ready to polish. And this will get all but the little bitty corners. I'm going to put the valves in another chamber real quick and show you how I did it. But think of it like painting. 
You know, most painters I've seen, they'll start on the trim, which is what I did. I started the trim, getting into hard crevices, switched from a little bitty prank brush to a medium brush, then to a big brush, and then back to another thin brush to go in here. You can kind of look at this like paint brushes, because that's basically what it is you're doing to get the areas right in here. And I always use valves in there to protect the seats. Sometimes you can do that. There are occasions where you cannot put the valve in there and then you got to really be careful because one wrong move and you'll be putting a hardened seat in the head. But anyway, let's throw a couple of valves in a chamber and let me show you how I do this little touch up work. Okay, how I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go in here in the corner with a nose. See, because of the shape of this belly, when it does its digging, it pulls any type of trench out of it. A flame can be a very valuable tool. Now it really lets me get in here. Remember the part that I couldn't get very well? Watch how well that it's able to get across the spark plug. And I'm putting pressure away from it. Okay, all but just a little bitty bit of it. This is an excellent tool for this kind of work. Because if you practice good with it, it will not let you down and it will not dig a print. Okay. That's just totally setting this up for the stone. Now the stones will come in here and really level this out really well. Any little leftover bumps or ridges, the stones will take care of. And, and I already see a couple of spots that after I'm done, I can take my finger like right here. I don't want to dig too much. I have my finger tool which is this little turkey bird right here, that real thin one, and I can just go in there and barely roll across it and finish pulling the rest of it in. Anyway, I just wanted to take the time to introduce you to my friend, the flame. Fire is our friend, the flame is mine. All right, on to the next part, getting ready to stone it and conclude the combustion chamber. Pretty much, y'all have seen my other videos on it. I'm just going to, you know, skip from the stone and polish and show you the finished product. I don't want to be too redundant, but the main thing y'all are wanting to see is how we unscrew the screw. GM put the screws to us. Head Bites is going to show you how to unscrew the screw and get more of the screw so that you don't get screwed. Ha <laughs> ha!